Okay, so this was uh, my early morning ride from Bullhead City, which is a little bit of a casino town uh, that I got to um, after a pretty uh, long ride. Um, I, I, I went, I went, uh, I went from Tucson, um, Arizona, and then went up to the Grand Canyon, and then back down to uh, to. Uh, uh, back back down to uh, Bullhead City, and uh, so this was my final ride day into um, Long Beach, California, which was which was probably my, my one my most fun riding day. So some some great uh, some great little roads. Uh, I, I think the first part is here in the, early in the morning. Uh, uh, I was it was a dual carriageway, and then. Then I basically got off and got into some uh, little roads and to Joshua Tree National Park, um, into the, you know, into some of the desert areas and just took some of the old national highways, which was really good fun. Even skirted a little bit of uh, Route 66 um, uh, on the way to Long Beach. So I left like I, it was before before daylight. Uh, the, the sun was just coming up at about six o'clock in the morning. And um, I had a really great ride in, and uh, it was a really fun day. And I just took my time, you know. Um, all of these trips, uh, it was just good to know that this was the final day. And uh, and I had, I think, I had around about seven or eight hours of riding, um, but I took it over about. I, I think I arrived in Long Beach at around about four p.m., five p.m. and uh, just took my time. Had about a three hours break and did some photos. I did a couple of. Uh, videos as well just talking about the trip across and it's just good you know you, you start at the Atlantic Ocean and, and it, it became a bit of a theme in my whole trip yeah you, you know, from seeing the Atlantic across to the Pacific and you do that crisscrossing um, uh, Central America and then you also uh, also the same thing happened down at the bottom in South America where the, the, the Southern Atlantic and the Southern Pacific on both sides it was pretty you know, the Pacific Ocean has always ha always has something pretty special um, in, in relation to me. Uh, I just it always just seems to be a better ocean. I don't know why. Um, it's because mainly I, I was brought up on the Pacific Ocean. Uh, or I grew up around there, and um, there was always that aqua blue. And in Australia, the Pacific sort of tells you that it's it's beautiful sands and beautiful beaches and big waves and. And that, but it's probably not real. I mean, the Atlantic Ocean probably has the same thing too. But you know, when I came to America, and on the Atlantic, the the, the shorelines were grey and the rocky, not not a lot of beautiful sand and, and stuff like that, which is not the case everywhere. But it just has that special uh, thing for me. Um, and Bullhead City, I stayed in a casino, which was a piece of crap, and everyone just wasting their money uh, in machines and. Stuff like that, and I only stayed one night there. And uh, again, it was a little bit of a pain because you know the, the lifts and that weren't working very well. And and then my room was a long way away from the lift toy. Just all these little things you learn along the way um, to to ensure when you do make a booking, you I have a pre I wrote this preset note. Can you please make sure that the room is. Uh, if it's, if it's a motel, that the room, or, or just think that I've got a grand floor room, I've got a motorbike. If you can, if, if I'm able to park the motorbike out the front, and most of the places were pretty accommodating, you know, um, uh, you know. So uh, just getting through here, and then I ended up staying in an Airbnb in Long Beach. It was a really nice place, balcony. It was right, right in Long Beach, and uh, it was it was a cool, cool spot. But this was probably my favourite riding day. Only because uh, I planned a few on, on a few maps to go in a few different areas and um, and go into a few different national parks, even though it was going to be a lot longer journey. If I had have gone straight there on the freeway, I probably could have got there in four or five five hours or something like that, five and a half hours. But I decided to uh, to take a few little uh, detours along the way, uh, of which I think a couple of them will be coming up soon on the video. But, um, a really look, uh, uh, California. I mean, it's a, it's a motorbike riders heaven as far as I'm concerned because just with the with the beautiful you've got the deserts, you've got the mountains, um, you know, you've got the ski the ski ski places as well and stuff like that high up in the mountains, um, and you know you've got the, the famous famous deserts as well. 
So um, it was pretty cool to get there. My, my, I've been to LA a few times and I've been to um, San, San Francisco, which when you travel to Australia, you've pretty much always got to uh, fly into San Francisco, LA, uh, or LA. And um, so I've been to San Francisco a few times. It's always been pretty cold. Um, but uh, yeah, so at this stage now, I'd, I'd light the bike up. I, um, I was getting used to the Garmin GPS as well. And using that, this is one of those little highways now. But these, these are absolutely fantastic to ride, these roads. Um, lots of twisties and just that just that feeling with the desert around you and um, and uh, just a small little road and there was hardly not many cars on it at all so it was pretty cool and there's a couple of little highways that I didn't even know about that uh, that once I looked on the map I thought oh well that can connect with that so that's pretty cool you know little little roads off here and there so it was a, a really cool little uh, little uh, adventure and it was a beautiful day too I, I got really lucky I was actually lucky the whole trip really when, when you consider what some of the other people have had to ride through I had some pretty some pretty shitty days in Patagonia uh, a lot of rain and wind and you know, dirt roads and mud and and stuff but I only had a few of those you know um, it can get a lot worse and you know I finished around the right time the best time to finish in South America, uh, if, if, you, if you're going to finish the trip, and that's what you've got to plan because you don't want to get stuck in in, uh, in Patagonia um, come you know May, June, July. I mean, you're you, you can't even ride at, at certain times of the year there, um, especially in Ushuaia. Like I think once you get into the middle of the southern winter, uh, you're pretty much screwed. There's no motorbike riding down south. And I wouldn't want to ride some of the dirt roads when they're frozen either. That would be pretty, pretty much a nightmare as well. But um, so my plan was to get to to Long Beach and to spend three or four days there. I think I ended up spending about five days there in all, and had a really nice time. Had a good apartment, uh, really nice apartment. Had you know, uh, it was a really beautiful apartment, and it was yeah, you know, it was relatively cheap as well com compared to others. So. Um, I spent a few days there, I rode into LA and then rode to Santa Monica and Santa Barbara and uh, just had a bit of a play around and a look around and uh, I really I really enjoyed, uh, I really like California, it's a beautiful place for, for riding motorbikes compared to Florida where it's just highway after highway and if they've got a problem with traffic they just build another highway and it's just all boring and, uh, and pretty crappy so it was just good to get out there and you know, it's such a beautiful day too. Um, so once I got to Long Beach, it was all about planning for the trip into uh, Baja, uh, Mexico, Baja, California, Mexico, and uh, and going from there. Um, there was one really cool thing that I had here. Um, uh, you know, there was a, a, a couple of foxes, and I and one of the places I stopped, there was a rattlesnake as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think I, I got a photo. I got a photo of the fox, but I didn't get the, the rattlesnake because I was standing still, just looking at it. Uh, <laughs> I was actually standing behind the bike when I saw it, and uh, um, I thought, well, I better not move, only because it was up against a bit of an embankment. So it probably I um, could have got away easily. But snakes, with snakes, you just want to make sure that the snake has got to get out, get out of jail free card. If it's got a jet get out jail free card, they're, they're normally not going to cause any problems. But if they're cornered or anything like that, you could find yourself in a little bit of trouble. But um, yeah, I, I basically, once I knew that I, you know, I was only a certain period amount of time away from Long Beach, I just started mucking around and just going up different roads all the time and having a bit of a play around uh, with the scenery. Um, so I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed it immensely. So. Basically, the planning for from from Long Beach is one of my stops there. I did a bit of a talk there, and that's where I think I saw the rattlesnake there. Um, but I, uh, um, I I sort of planned, you know, I didn't I didn't really want to plan much of my trip, but uh, crossing the border and having to speak to having spoken to a couple of other riders about their experiences, it was all about making sure that I knew what I had to do as soon as I crossed the border from San Diego into Mexico, 
to make sure that I got everything I needed for the, the tourist card and uh, they didn't stamp my passport and it, it's a, it, it's probably one of those things where you get when you, and I'll talk about it in the, in the video when I go in there, it's probably one of those things you, you've really, really got to be careful of and that is um, some of the border crossings, you, you could theoretically just drive straight through them and would, you wouldn't even know that it was a border crossing or that was the spot you had to go and then, then it's too late. You can't turn back because they barricade off everything pretty severely. So uh, it's important to know exactly what you're doing and I know a lot of people got caught out there uh, and it can cause lots of troubles. The most important thing getting into Baja is getting the tourist card as I found out. And, um, and you don't want to you don't want to ride in there without that. Not that they check it, but to get out of that to get out of that, you need the tourist card. There's no way out of uh, Baja unless you have to fly back to get the tourist and go out again and then come in again. And the only way to do that is by plane. Uh, so yeah, so there's a few things I was thinking of, and then basically also was my last chance to send anything back from from um, from the US back to back home. So if they, so I went through all my gear again and and just got another, there was just one more box of stuff that I sent back. You know, I had like all spare batteries and all this, here's me doing a bit of a chat there. And um, uh, I had spare batteries and I thought, well, I just don't need that many spare batteries. So it's just all about lightening the load. And as you can see there, I, I, you know, I had quite a load on the bike. And by the end of my trip, I was probably another 15 kilos lighter. Because uh, by, the, by the time I, I got to San Diego and Chile, I decided to get rid of a whole heap of stuff and just lighten the uh, the uh, the load even further. Uh, just because you know I was going to be doing a lot of off roading, and you know it's just it's just tough work. You know, um, especially you know when I knew that there was going to be times where maybe the bike will fall over or I'll come off the bike and having to repack the bike and and keeping the bike steady. You know, when you look when you lose it at a bit of speed with a bike that's heavy, it jolts you around a fair bit and you've really got to keep your wits about you to keep the bike straight. I found, I found that out a couple of times and, you know, if, if I look through the whole trip, I, you know, I didn't come off once in uh, in Patagonia, I didn't come off the bike once, but at, at times I was going like five or 10 kilometers an hour through certain areas uh, because I just didn't want to have to re, you know, because I've been through the sand, uh, once before and I just just unpacking the bike and having to walk it is just tough work you know it's just hard yakka you look back on it and you, you laugh about it but it was it was tough work uh, so I basically wanted to make sure that uh, uh, while I was riding in that stuff that I was always in control um, yeah, you get a, you get a little bit more confident as the day goes on but you're still wary that you've got to be careful you know um, it's all right if you've got your, your bikes pretty light and stuff like that. You can jump around a little bit and you're not so worried. But when you've got a big weight on it, it, it it's always on your mind. Yeah. So uh, I um I always I always think about um, you know when I'm doing a long ride is I'm always thinking about making sure that I'm well rested and stuff like that. And um, and you you basically. Uh, you, your, your body tells you when to have a bit of a break, you know, and when to when to, when to take a bit of a rest stop. And um, and uh, but the, as a general rule, I was always thinking on these sort of roads, every two hours, take 15, 20 minutes, uh, and try, so you get to about two hours, and then you just look for a nice little spot to park and park your bike and get off. And if it's even better, if you can get it through a, a, a town somewhere and get into a park where you can actually lay down on the bench because uh, you are sitting down a lot, so you want to stretch out. Um, and then when you're doing off-roading, you're really doing it every hour. And sometimes, you know, a couple of roads I went on, I was even doing it less than every every couple of, uh, every hour, I was probably doing it about every 30, 40 minutes, because I was, it's pretty hard yakka, you know, especially when, you know, it's pretty thick stuff and you'd be going through. Uh, so it's just always good to get a bit rested. And, um, you yeah, know, there's only a few, a, a few times I, I stopped the bike and took some photos and, and then I go around the corner, it was an even better spot, you know, like you, you sort of get that a fair bit. But your, your plan is to get, you know, your ride days, which I had, I think, 90, 90 odd ride days out of the whole trip. And they were the days where I was riding from one point to another and staying at another point. And there was quite a few of those where I, uh, 
I, uh, I, um, I, I basically uh, just, you know, went off into different areas and, and then sort of plan out some of the, the towns that I was going to stop off at and stuff like that. But it never quite works out uh, the way you want it to, but that's all part of the adventure. And, uh, um, you know, I'll, I'll always look back and, and think, you know, one day again I want to I want to take the bike and maybe spend a couple of weeks in California just going around the different areas and, you know, the Utah is also another goal of mine to get into Utah. So I've done the Tail of the Dragon in, in North Carolina and Tennessee and that. That was pretty cool but there was just a lot of bikes. So it's you know, not as much fun as what you think it would be when you just got a lot of, you know, you're always catching up with the bike in front of you and, and slowing you down and then you try to, then you try to ease off a bit so you've got a bit of distance between yourself and the bike in front so you can have a bit of fun around the twisties and then somebody's coming up your backside, you know, so it does. The only way to go to the Tail of the Dragon and a place like that is to actually go during the week when there's less riders on the road. So yeah, so anyway, the last couple of photos here are all from uh, from Long Beach, and uh, it was a pretty cool cool trip. And uh, uh, it's, that's uh, one of the beaches around Long Beach, and uh, that was a pretty cool spot. Went for a swim and stayed in some nice, uh, did some tours. Like you know, out of the five or six days I was there, I probably three or four of those days I took the bike out for about half a day and uh, had a look around. And it's a pretty cool little spot. Um, I'm pretty sure it's pretty expensive living there, but. Uh, I really enjoyed it. So anyway, if, again, any questions or comments, uh, let me know and uh, I will um, I'll respond in kind. So I hope you have a great time and uh, talk to you guys soon.